Hey guys, it's Ann Yorks from The Flower Box and I have a really fun fall tutorial for you. I love fall, I love the cozy weather, I love scarves and puffy vests and lattes and pumpkins are everywhere so that's exactly what this tutorial is all about. Today I'm going to show you how to create lots of dimension with your royal icing with a beautiful vest cookie. Then we're going to explore a wet on wet pattern and create plaid. After that we're going to take a look at making the latte cup. I've shown this one before but we're going to use a pinstripes airbrushed background to add a quick pattern to it. And then we're going to look at a leaf and a pumpkin just to make it feel super fall. Now for this kit, I'm using a fun color palette. And if you want all the details on these colors, definitely check out the blog post for how much icing I made and how I made these colors. Plus, this tutorial is matched up with a cookie decorating kit. That means that the essential cutters and stencils are gonna be all in one place if you're interested in recreating these. All right, let's cookie it up. For the vest cookie, we're actually using a basketball jersey. So this one, hang on to it because it'll come in handy for March Madness. So we're gonna start off with our pinstripes stencil and we're just using a yellow food marker to guide uh, some lines on there. That's gonna guide the piping for creating the different sections of the puffy vest. And then I'm gonna use those lines and put a couple guide dots before I start piping. This will eliminate the need to use any sort of projector, but it'll also keep my cookies pretty consistent from cookie to cookie. So it takes just a little bit of extra effort to get those lines and guide dots on there, but it really pays off. So I outlined the cookie with piping icing and tip number two, and now I'm gonna go back in and fill in alternating areas with my tipless bag and my flood icing. This is a 10 second icing. And I'm just filling in those alternating areas and I'm gonna let them dry for about 30 minutes in front of the fan before I come back and fill in the little neighbors there. And I'm gonna let those dry as well and that just creates that beautiful dimension. I also filled in the interior section of the vest. You'll see I already have the purple flooded in there as well. So again, I'm gonna let that cookie dry for about 30 minutes in front of the fan and once it has a chance to dry, I'm ready to add the folded out part of the vest and that's our final flood using that tipless bag. Now once everything has a chance to dry, I'm gonna go back in and add the zipper. I have a tip number one on my gray icing and I'm just gonna overlap teardrops of icing to create the illusion that there's a zipper on the edge there. And then as I go down, I'll alternate those teardrops to create that zipper area. And it just kind of cleans up the cookie, but it also adds a really fun texture to it. So we're almost done with this. I'm gonna add a few piped lines just to bring this cookie to life and clean it up a little bit. You can always tap your scribe in there to clean up any of the lines if you get a little icing pop. And I'm gonna add some pockets and now our puffy vest is ready to go to the pumpkin patch. This next cookie is one of my other favorites from this set. We're actually using the awareness ribbon cookie cutter to create this really fun plaid scarf. So this cookie cutter can be a scarf, but you can also use it this month for October for breast cancer awareness as well. And I just love when cookie cutters can have more than one use. So I outlined with a wiggly line and I'll provide a template for this cookie design on the blog post for this tutorial if it's helpful to have something to either trace or use in your projector. So once I have that base flooded in, I'm gonna use my blue flood icing and I'm just gonna wiggle two blue lines along the edge. Then I'm gonna go back in and add two purple lines and I'll just space those out evenly. And then to finish off the plaid, I'll pipe one final blue line. So I love how it looks that two lines are underneath the purple and one line is on top. I think it really makes that plaid look more realistic. 
I'll let that area dry and then I'll come back and finish that small section. And those sections have a nice dimension to it so that it looks like the scarf is really folding on top of itself. Now before we finish this cookie, we just wanna add the fringe and that's always fun. I'm just using a tip number two. I'm wiggling the tip in there and I'm just giving it a wiggle to create that fun texture of the fringe. And this cookie is done. Now for the latte. You really can't have a fall season without a latte. There is a template for this cookie on the blog post, but this one's pretty easy to follow the shape of the cookie to guide your outline. So you'll see that's what I'm doing here. Again, I like to use tip number two for my outlines, and I'm gonna set off those rectangular areas first. I'm gonna flood in the cup sleeve. I'm gonna flood in the lid as well, and I'm gonna flood over that line just to keep a nice solid area up there, but I'll add some piped accent lines at the end so that lid has a little bit more dimension to it. So now I'm gonna use my pinstripe stencil again. This is the same stencil I used in the beginning on the puffy vest, and Anytime I'm airbrushing with stripes, I just want to follow the line. So I want to blow the color going horizontal across. And I don't think that looks bright enough, so I'm actually going to line this stencil back up. You can definitely do this. And I'm going to airbrush it one more time just so I can really see those lines. That looks much better. Now I'm going to flip this stencil 90 degrees and I'm gonna follow the vertical lines. Notice my airbrush gun goes up and down now because the lines are going up and down. And that creates a fun plaid look on that sleeve. But I love that it's in silver, so it's not an overpowering background. We can still add a detail to that latte cup. I'll let that cookie dry all the way, and now I'm ready to add the details. So the first thing I want to do is just outline the lid and I'm just going to add some piped lines to finish off that area. It just cleans it up. Then I'll pipe horizontal lines on the sleeve as well. And now I'm going to add the pumpkin and I'm just going to freehand this. But if you want to use a projector, definitely use the template that I've provided. I don't know that that's necessary because they don't have to be perfect from cookie to cookie. So I generally just outline three little bumpy sections of the pumpkin and I'm gonna let that center section dry for about 15 to 30 minutes in front of the fan and then I'll come back in and flood the neighboring sections. And just that little bit of dry time really helps to add the dimension between those pumpkin sections and give it that fun, full, bumpy look. Now to keep this cookie simple, I am just using the colors from this set. So I didn't mix up an extra brown and green. I actually used gray and ivory to finish off this pumpkin. And this little leaf, I'm using tip number 65S. It's a mini leaf tip. So I think it looks really cute using the same icing colors from this set. And I don't feel like I need to mix any more colors. Sometimes when you're making a cookie set, you just need a breath of fresh air, and that's what this leaf cookie is. It's a pretty simple accent cookie. I love this fun purple color that we have. Again, if you want information on icing colors and how much to make, definitely check out the blog post for an icing guide. We're just gonna flood that base in and add some polka dots to make this a little bit more whimsical. I love how the polka dots can dress up the cookie without too much more work. And then once we have the polka dots on, we'll let that cookie dry for about an hour in front of the fan, and then we're just gonna add some wavy lines. And this one's pretty easy to do. It comes together really quickly, and sometimes when you have a more labor-intensive cookie like the puffy jacket or the latte cup, it's nice to have one easy cookie in the mix just to come together nice and quick. 
So now our final cookie. I love this three inch pumpkin. It's such a great size for a cookie. It's just a couple bites and we're just gonna flood it all the way in. We're not doing different sections this time because we're gonna stencil. I'm gonna use the stiff purple icing to stencil the gather image on here. I have my anchor finger in place and I'm just gonna generously cover that stencil. That final swipe, I'm removing the excess and then we see that beautiful image on there. I'm gonna add the pumpkin stem using ivory and then my very last detail is with tip number 67 for the leaf. And this pumpkin, not all pumpkins have to be orange, so feel free to get playful with your icing colors and create a couple different variations of that stencil. So that's it for the cozy fall cookie set. I hope you enjoyed watching. I would be so flattered if you recreated these cookies. If you do, please definitely tag me at Flower Box Bakery or use hashtag Flower Box Bakery so I can see what you create. Check out that blog post for extra details on how many cookies you can bake, for the icing guide, and also for the cozy fall cookie decorating kit, which has the essential cutters and stencils in the kit for you to recreate these cookies. If you have questions, post them below. I'd love to help. Thanks for watching and happy decorating.